the first layer of trim or the sub trim or the furring strips, whatever you want to call it, around the garage door are all fastened now with screws. Mark and Elena just did all the pre-cutting for the decorative, the nice outer layer of window trim, and they're about ready to start assembling it. So that means I need a job and I'm going to start on the blocking for all of our mechanical penetrations. I'm talking about lighting, pipes, vents, everything that relates to the me mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems of the house that's gotta pop through the exterior wall. So we have quite a few of them. I think we have eight lights, two or three outlets, intakes and exhaust for the ERV, the dryer, and the hot water heater. So the idea is to make nice square blocks that it's easy to cut siding around for these penetrations. This is a pre-made electrical block that's typically used on vinyl siding. I got this because it had a UL listed junction box built into it, but I'm kind of waffling back and forth on whether I even want to use this because it's really small and we're going to be putting some very large light fixtures so that it's the scales right with the garage door and the bases are gonna be way bigger than this little box is. What I've seen on other build sites around this area, and you can chime in if you know anything different, but I just see wires hanging out of the wall, like they just drill a hole through the wall, put the wire out, and then they essentially use the fixture as its own junction box. Here's an example of a fixture that we were thinking about using, but then realized it's too small. But it's basically got this plate that's unscrews, and it's just a flat piece of plate. It's got a grounding lug on it. And like, I guess the little recessed area inside this right here is considered the junction box. After doing a little more research on this and asking around, I learned this is not an NAC acceptable practice. Every fixture needs a junction box of some sort. So in just a little bit, I'll go through how I was able to accommodate an actual junction box at these garage light fixtures. I've sort of already done this for our air conditioning units and our gas line. I just put one huge block here. This is right on the back side of our utility room, so it will be easy for me if I ever need to punch any future stuff in here, which I still have to put in two outlets, a generator plug and a normal outlet, and I think that's it actually. But it'll be really easy for me to punch right through the utility room, and I already have a pre-flashed block in place. That's why I did this big one here. But this is how I'm planning on treating it with the siding. This is going to be Benjamin Oblex Liquor Max rain screen and then James Hardy smooth lap siding on this portion of the wall. So I bent these J channels. This is a little bit wider than a standard J. This is like an inch thick to accommodate that rain screen. And then I have like a little head flashing uh, above this. So I think I'm gonna use the same scheme to do all the rest of the blocking. Uh, the ones that don't have like obviously a stone veneer below it like this, I'll just keep the J going all the way around the bottom. Hardy's recommended detail on this is to use sealant, just put a block and then butt the siding up to it and then caulk around it. I really just don't like that. I feel like it will just create exterior maintenance in the future. So I'm gonna go with the J-channel route, even though it's not technically what they recommend. This next hole is for the dryer vent. I went in there and figured out which stud bay it needed to go in and then drilled a little pilot hole roughly where it needs to be. And then now that I'm out here, I'm aligning it. I struck a level line with the top of the block that I just installed for the water heater exhaust so that my blocks are at the same height. It'll make siding a little bit less of a pain in this area later. So now just to put the gigantic hole in the wall. Sheathing's out. There she is, future dryer exhaust. Crap. This is called a no pest vent, which comes with a flashing block that all I have to do is fasten and zip tape it to the wall. And then the vent cover actually has a two stage door to make sure no pest can in. The next blocks I need to think about are the intake and exhaust for our ERV, our energy recovery ventilator. This is a six inch duct and this thing is big. The frame on this is nine by nine. And so it, I can't really use a single piece of PVC or I could, but it would cost me my firstborn child. So instead I used some scraps and built a little 10 by 10 picture frame. And that way I'm gonna put this on the wall sort of behind this. And then once we're gonna side up to this, we'll have, I'll flash this little block here. And then I will use a, another piece of PVC to come back and sandwich on top of this, kind of similar to our window trims, I guess. Um, but that second piece of PVC will just hide the edges. And then I think eventually we'll paint this white too to match everything else. Oh, 
All right, the picture frames up. I don't actually own a six inch hole saw, so I just went on Amazon and ordered one of those. Once we have that block flashed and everything, we can come back and do that later. The next thing is the bathroom fan for the downstairs. Excuse me. The bathroom fan for the downstairs is gonna come out just underneath this deck joist. That's gonna be a four inch hole and I'm gonna use the same kind of vent as I used for the dryer. That's called a no pest vent. It's kind of like a double flapped door. They're not too expensive, like $20 I think, um, but it's simple, easy to do. It's already pre-flashed, so I just have to pop the hole and zip tape over it. This bath fan was part of the reason I softened the ceiling down. As you can see, I have deck joist fasteners up there so I would not be able to drill through the band joist in that area. So with this one foot soffit, this little area right there is where I'm gonna be able to drill our bath fan to pipe through. All right, I'm gonna finish this from the outside. I got the pilot hole started. Holy smokes. Slider, okay. Bath fan is done onto receptacles. This is for the deck, uh, so it's gonna be up above my deck ledger. I will be using one of these preformed J-channel blocks for this. However, I consulted with a friend who's an electrician and he assured me that for the lighting, I cannot use the fixture as a junction box. He would use a pancake box inside of a piece of PVC. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make all my own lighting blocks. So I'll be able to take some of these back, which is great because they're like $25 each. So this is a UL approved junction box, quite a big one actually, 41 cubic inches. And I just popped in one of these plastic push-in Romex connectors through the back. That way I'll have my hole drilled in the wall where the wire's gonna come through. I can just stick the wire through from the inside and then pump this full liquid flash and seal that sucker right up. For the upstairs bath fan, I'm gonna have to do something a little bit funky. We're going to be softening the ceiling down one foot from a 10 foot to a nine foot. And I thought I was gonna be able to run my duct just down and out right out the wall, but then I remembered my soffit vent is literally right there. And code is three foot from any sort of vent. So I'm gonna have to get a little bit more creative. I think I'm gonna use my soffit ceiling still to run the vent down. I think I'll come over in a cup, maybe, I have a niche down here. So it might be like this stud bay all the way down here. And then I'm gonna come down through the floor. That'll pop out like right here. And then I can just take a straight 90 right out the band joist, which coincidentally is very close to my other bathroom vent, which ended up right there. And that way I'll be able to line up that vent with all the other three on that level. And then the bathroom one down here is sort of odd man out. After drilling the pilot hole for this bath fan, here's me climbing up and realizing how close it is to the ERV exhaust. I did not realize it was gonna be like that. So I'm trying to think through what I'm gonna do for this. I didn't realize it was gonna be that close. Holy hell. That gonna work? We might have to do a double PVC frame for that. End of another long day of trim, but luckily we have the RV to come back to now. Oh. I'm currently letting the pressure out of the Instapot. <laughs> Making some rice? Making some rice. Excellent. Done in 12 minutes. And to speed it up, you let out the pressure manually, which you're not supposed to do this, so don't follow as I do. <laughs> All right, here's the plan for this. First of all, I wish I would have drilled this centered with this, but I thought I was going to be using the same J-channel block as I have down there here, which would have put the top of the J-channel block right in line with this line, which is what I was looking for. But then I realized a better solution would be just to combine these two into one large block and just use the surface mount of this. You can see the little dimples there. You can use those to put through holes through and screw that right to this little PVC block I made. So instead I'm gonna do the much harder route which is kind of infill this with more PVC. And then at the end of it, I'm gonna take a PVC half inch sheet and just put it over top the whole thing. We are now onto lighting blocks. I've had a change of heart on the small lighting blocks that we'll be using for all the man doors. We're going to use the easy ply gem blocks. It's just the big lighting blocks for the garage doors where I'm gonna make the PVC frames. 
So I cut a piece of plywood here to eight and a quarter inches and drew a line on, line on it at seven and a quarter inches. That represents a piece of siding and I'm using this to basically story pull where my siding is all gonna land on the actual house. So I basically just did my half inch of clearance above here and then went up, drew lines with a level and then I can place my electrical block where I am cognizant of where the siding lines are gonna be. This is my first time wearing this shirt. Matt Reisinger gave us these when we were in Las Vegas at the International Builder Show this year. And I gotta say, he did not cheap out on these. This is True Work Apparel. It's my first piece of True Work Apparel that I've ever owned. And they are really, really nice. So thanks, Matt, if you happen to see this. I appreciate the shirt. I'm a big fan of this logo too. I think they did a great job for the Build Show Network logo. Build. Fast forward a bit and we've actually gotten our siding done. I didn't get much film of doing the rest of the mechanical blocks or the garage light block. So I'm just gonna circle back and go through exactly what we did and how that all is gonna turn out. You're gonna get a small sneak peek of the siding. We're gonna be doing full length videos on those upcoming. So just hold any questions or thoughts you might have on the siding for those videos. Here's one of the frames we made for the garage lighting block. So it's an pretty large frame and it had plenty of room for a four inch junction box to sit right in there. Sealed it up with some liquid flash where the wire comes through and coated the whole back of the box so it bonds really well to that zip sheathing. That thing is not going anywhere. Put some metal head flashing above the mount block and then before mounting the fixture, the last step is to come back and take a half inch PVC sheet and go over the whole top of this and overlap the edges probably three quarter to one inch to basically create a hidden edge for all the siding that's cut. These frames are made out of three quarter PVC and then we shimmed them out a quarter inch so that there's actually a gap behind this block to integrate with the rain screen, which is a quarter inch thick as well. The white weatherproof junction box I use, this four inch round box, is about an inch and a half deep. Half inch sheet should stack up pretty nicely and come flush with the face of the box. That way the lighting fixture can mount flush to the half inch sheet. There's always the option if something doesn't stack up right to laminate two half inch sheets together and then I could either just have it come out a little bit thicker or plane it down if I really need to. But PVC definitely allows a lot of flexibility in that regard. The no pest vents turned out really nicely. Those worked well and I have no complaints whatsoever with how that looks. Here's the lighting block now that the siding's around it and has the trim ring on. Also, I think it's a really nice clean look. The water heater block is totally finished. I put the half inch sheet on it to basically form the jade channel around it. Decided not to use the metal jade channel like I originally was thinking about there, but the half inch sheet looks really nice. It hides all the cut edges of the siding and the cone on the water heater sat right up to it. And you can still see the metal head flashing that's above the whole assembly. Similar story for the ERV exhaust bath fan combo. That bath fan's not hooked up yet, so that's why that thing's sitting in there a little bit cockeyed, but I'm gonna have the full half inch sheet that's gonna go over top all all that once I get the ERV exhaust hood in place. One last situation to mention is the blocking for things in our stone veneer, such as this house hydrant from Aquar and another receptacle block. Aquar has these stainless mounting blocks, so we're gonna basically try to cut the stone around this and we'll sort of lap it over this portion of the block so it's a nice clean finish. Then we'll seal that around with Sashco Morflex. It's a purpose-made sealant for this exact type of application. Same deal over here on the outlet box, although this has a removable frame like all the rest of them. This is just masked off right now to protect it from mortar. But I think we'll try to run the stone basically up to this. We might put some thinner stuff here and then we'll still put the, the frame to sort of hide any cut edges of the stone and sort of picture frame that out. Hopefully you picked up a thing or two from this video on how we did our mechanical blocking. As you can see, the next thing coming up is siding. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.